Hi. Um, it brings me no pleasure at all to announce that Jim from Shampt, um died on May 4th of this year, 2013. And um, we don't know where we're going from here. But we'll do something on this channel. But for now, I wanted to, as a tribute to Jim, I want to read what I read at his memorial service. This is the hardest thing I've ever written, and I've written things since I learned how. But when asked to write this, I sat staring at a blinking cursor for many nights. And then I thought, what would Jim do? And the answer is easy. Jim would tell a story. But which story? There's so many. I met Jim Clark in the early 90s. It's hard to remember what it was like before I met him, since it has always felt like he was there. Jim was and is such a part of me and of so many of our experiences. We met at Seattle Espresso's Lit Night, where we would take turns reading prose and poetry that we'd written. Jim was his gentle giant, always ready with a quick, funny observation, and he wrote atmospheric and thoughtful prose. We quickly became friends. Jim was my partner on so many projects. Years ago, we had a band called Soul Pits. One of our favorite activities was to go to an open mic night, and when it was our turn, we'd hold down the same chord on our keyboards for minutes at a time, just to see how long it took for them to chase us off the stage. We did that just because it was funny to us. At some point we became bored with this and we started to write actual songs. We became housemates and one room always had our instruments set up. Many evenings one of us would just start playing something and the other would come in and start playing as well. We knew when the other was about to change how we were playing without ever looking at one another. It just happened. I've never before or since experienced such a connection with another person, creatively. And yet, he claimed not to be creative. We know that that wasn't true. He didn't think he could play music, and yet he'd noodle away on his guitar or keyboards for hours. But more than that, Jim was a wordsmith. He wrote a lot, and he was really quick with something to make you laugh, or think, or both. Human conversation was an art for him. Clear, concise thoughts, though he sometimes had problems expressing some of his emotions. Then again, how many of us can? Much more recently, Jim and I had a movie review show, where we got to combine his love of movies with his insightful observations, along with his incredible sense of humor. This made us much more accessible, reaching tens of viewers, sometimes dozens. Having a creative project with Jim was always the best. Shooting days were always such a high, though sometimes we'd look at what we were doing and wonder how we got there. Like running around downtown New Haven wearing an oversized raven mask, or finding ourselves dressed up like the Mythbusters while Lana pelt us in the face with flour thrown in front of a leaf blower. It didn't matter if the viewers weren't finding the show. We did it because it was funny to us. Many years ago, we worked together at an office supply store. Though I was pretty much broke all the time in those days, I remember them as a really happy part of my life. Jim wasn't one to let the jerky customer get to him. He joked about them later. Oh, the wire on these paper clips is just too thick. My foot is warm. In the mid-90s, Jim and I loved going dancing at the once glorious Gothic Industrial Clubs of Connecticut. While dancing there, we would sometimes fall into this thing where we'd make fun of the other dancers by dancing like them. This backfires on a few times, where people would start dancing like us, except they really thought we were the cool dancers, probably because we were dancing like them. This was even funnier to us. Over the last couple of years, Jim and I had discussed his wishes, should he die. Those included having his body suspended by wires and suddenly drop down from the ceiling with loud techno music suddenly playing. So we couldn't do that. So I guess we had to go with plan B. His other wishes were to have his ashes scattered over director Catherine Bigelow. Jim hated cliches, though he begrudgingly admitted that cliches exist because sometimes they're just true. I'm sorry, Jim. I tried to avoid them.
but here goes. Jim touched more lives than he knew. Jim's heart was huge, and he didn't like those around him to suffer. Though he joked around most of the time, when someone was really upset, he was always there with a giant hug and calming words. Through Jim's sharp wit and gentle demeanor, he made everyone he met a better person. Jim was a wonderful friend to have, no matter the situation. He was a great father, too. Just looking at his son, you can see just how awesome he was at that. His passing has left a Jim-shaped hole in all of our hearts, and I know that we'll never forget all the good times we had with him. I'm sorry, Jim, just one more cliché. We love seeing the band V&V Nation play. And so I'll end with some lyrics to a song that I, I know meant a lot to him. A part of your soul ties you to the next world, or maybe to the last, but I'm still not sure. But what I do know is to us the world is different, as we are to the world, but I guess you would know that. Please don't go. I want you to stay. I'm begging you please, oh please don't leave here. I don't want you to change for all the hurt that you feel. The world is just illusion, always trying to change you. One last thing. What would Jim do? If Jim left us with any lesson, it is to be able to find the humor in the situation, no matter what's happening. Do something funny, just for yourself. Someone else will always laugh with you. Thank you, Jim. We love you. Love you, Jim.